Good morning, everyone. Welcome back. We're gonna get started on part 15 of the Case 310G Dozer restoration project. I have a couple of things I need to organize yet this morning. Got some extra sockets in. I've been pretty impressed with these uh, Tecton brand on Amazon. Fairly re reasonably priced and uh, the shipping is always great. Got to organize those into the toolbox. We'll bring you along for that. And then I have a new addition to the camera tripod. I'll show you now. I will be shooting this freehand, so pardon the shakiness. We have our Manfrotto pixie mount with a quarter 20 bolt with a clothespin glued to it. And then a small directional microphone and a dongle to go in the back of the Pixel 5. And then we also have our Gorilla tripod mount. These have opposable rubber legs. You can wrap them around something or get the proper angle on the camera very quickly. I noticed in the tooling up video that my audio was a little quiet, so I'm hoping that will fix it. We won't use it all the time, but when we need it, we need it. With that being said, we're going to throw you on the tripod, open up the toolbox and organize what little bit of tools we have. Then we're gonna get started pulling the engine out of the bulldozer. Okay, we've got our tools organized up. I'm excited to use the new tools for the first time. I accidentally deleted the pictures I took of all the placements for these lines. However, this is an extremely simple setup. So I'm going to label all these and take pictures again. And then we're going to get ready to pull our hydraulic cylinders and the hydraulic sweep arms here. We'll bring you along. Right, we have all of our lines labeled accordingly. We're going to crack those loose and then get ready to drop our cylinders. We are going to need to have this one made new. It is almost completely rubbed in half and I believed it's been brazed once before. So that's a little disappointing, but is what it is. I'm gonna go ahead and take the rubber lines off. Okay, our torch just paid for itself. Didn't have to run back and spend 30 minutes wrangling the other one from the other shop. Uh, this baby, I am pretty sure, is original. I'm letting it cool down because there is oil in there and you do not want hot oil spraying around. Not that it's under pressure, but I'm just gonna let it cool for a little bit and start on this one. I'm sure it'll need the same treatment. We'll bring you along. to pull our first ram. Uh, 
that was fairly simple, fairly painless. Seems pretty tight yet. I did know that when I first ran this machine, this side was quite loose. That'll get all brand new hardware, everything, perhaps upsize the holes one to re-tighten everything back up. It's fairly simple. There's a bolt that goes down into that cut little divot there, and then the retaining pin goes in. I'm bagging these and labeling them right and left. Not that that would matter very much, but I want to put it back the same way it came apart. Here you can see the ram. It's getting exciting. We'll bring you along. Okay, like I told you guys, this side was loose when I bought the machine. So, typical farmer fashion, they jammed a smaller bolt in there, and then to keep it from backing out, they uh, whacked it with a chisel a few times. It's always the answer. If you have a problem, beat it with a hammer, then it will solve itself. Fortunately for me, it can't be tight if it's a liquid. I'm going to fire up the hot wrench, turn that into butter. I hate to break the paint, but it's uh, square headed back here. I can't get anything on it. It's right up against this little boss here for the oil filter. And uh, this one I might be able to get once this one's out of the way. Wish me luck. Okay, everyone, we have the sweep arms removed. It was best thing going to just cut those mamas after all that farmer hackery going on. Show you the other side. We have it removed as well. It's really starting to open up the engine bay. I like it. 
I think our course of action now is to drain our fluids, unfortunately, uh, is what it is, however. Uh, previously, a viewer reached out to me and was trying to see how to mount the alternator. I had to reverse this little alternator arm and then it swung the other way that it originally did. It used to swing around the generator. And then I had to get a shoulder bolt from Fastenal. I think this was a 5 16 thread, and then I needed a 3 8 shoulder to uh, accommodate this. Uh, I think it was a Kubota uh, alternator or something like that. I got it offline. It's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be single wire and eliminate all of the voltage regulator and whatnot. The alternator footage was lost. It was right at the time when I was switching phones from my old Kyocera to the Pixel 5. I also had to drill and tap this boss up here to accept a 5 16 bolt because it was metric. Like I said, I think this comes off of a Kubota or something like that. Fairly simple operation. And then our Gates belt, in case anyone missed it, is an A45. Gates high power. With all that being said, I'm going to get started on draining our coolant first, and then we will go after the hydraulic oil once the radiator is removed. Okay, guys, I was going to go after the antifreeze first, but of course, some engineer was involved, and our petcock is right above our hydraulic line. So, that dictates that we're gonna have to drop the hydraulic oil first, and then we can remove this line, then remove the antifreeze. Uh, this has the potential to be quite comical, so <laughs> we'll bring you along. See if I can put a screwdriver in the bottom and see if that'll open it up. I think I'm actually just going to let that kind of go nice and slow because it's going to be perfectly controllable to switch buckets. So it's going to take a little bit of time, but. Uh, this is the safest way, and then I can save my oil and not have to buy that again. Okay, guys, our oil has slowed down considerably. Just going to let that keep draining. We have to remove our large hydraulic line now so we can drain the antifreeze. If you've made it this far in the video, please leave a like, subscribe, share the video, and don't forget about the Facebook page. The link will be down below in the description. Uh, apparently the YouTube algorithm is all screwed up, so that'll help the channel grow, help me make a little bit more money, not that I'm getting rich at it, uh, which in turn gives you guys more content. So. We're gonna keep on trucking. Let's pull this line off.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we have all of our fluids drained for the second time on this project. We have our bucket catching a uh, few more drips that are straggling. While that was draining, I know you guys will see just a few seconds of that, but that actually took about an hour. But I did want to save the fluid. Um, I was able to pull our fuel shut off. Goes right back here, this little lever on the fuel pump. And then it snakes through a little clip back there that retains it. I pulled the pipe off of the exhaust and I pulled this guy right here, our blow by line that goes down into the belly pan. We're gonna be changing that in the future. And I have our temperature gauge loose setting here. These are all very self-explanatory things. Take the bolts off, take the bracket off. Now I'm going to proceed with taking that out. And then we have our oil pressure gauge line right here. We have to remove that. I'm going to get started now on removing the radiator for the second time. Removing the hoses, stopping up all of the uh, holes with shop towels, things of that nature. And then we will be back to <laughs> right where we started from. Throw you guys on the tripod. Apologize for all the time lapse, but you've already watched me put this all together, so no need of watching it twice. Before I throw the bolt in the scrap bucket, I wanted to document this and show you guys the wallered out holes. It never pays to put a undersized bolt into something. The reason I could not get anything on the sucker was because it had sat in the hole and done this about 400,000 times. You can see just the profound wear we have here. Always go get the proper bolt and you will save yourself a lot of time and heartache destroying and wallering out the holes on your frame. All right, that's enough whining out of me. Let's get the radiator pulled. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are just about where we started a month or two ago. I have to take detailed pictures before I start tackling fuel lines, things of that nature. I have a few things off, but nothing that was not completely self-explanatory to anyone that's watching the channel or has watched the channel for more than 15 minutes. Just kind of a general look over of the engine. A lot of prep work to pull in this girl. Uh, a little bit on the depressing side to be right back where we started from, but we will persevere. This old girl is gonna run again. I think I'm gonna cut the video right there. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe for more. Go to the Facebook page. Leave us a like, 
share the videos, and hit that bell icon so you get notifications of future videos. Thanks for watching, folks.